Hey everybody, it's Big V and we are talking teams. Let's talk about how to really practice your scripts and dialogues. Everybody wants to know, how do I get better at the game? What is it that I can work on that will improve my performance when I'm shoulder to shoulder with a buyer or seller? Well, I, you know, I practice all the time. Matter of fact, my wife thinks I'm a little bit strange because we'll be walking along somewhere and I'll be practicing something or when I'm by myself in the bathroom talking in the mirror, she's like, hey, who are you talking to in there? I'm telling you that when you practice, you put yourself in a situation so that you can really understand what they're saying instead of always constantly trying to think about what you're gonna say next. We practice scripts and dialogues because we want to be able to listen to understand instead of just listening to respond. The art of role play practice or script practice is like everything else, it's a system. And when you break it down into actionable items and you follow the same system every time, what happens is you start to create a rhythm. And when you create that rhythm, it allows you to put that script into your muscle memory. When it's in your muscle memory and the objection comes up or the situation rears its ugly head, you don't have to wonder what to say because it automatically comes to your memory recall and allows you to deal with that situation with excellence, expertise, and professionalism. I love doing role play practice and script practice because it teaches my agents and gives them confidence to be able to have and go into any real estate situation and know that they have the ability to come out successful. And the way I measure success is, did the customer get what they wanted? Is the customer happy? Did they get the home they want? Did they get the sell they want? Did they, were they able to move? That's how we measure success. Practicing scripts and dialogue simply puts us in a position to create a better client experience. So why wouldn't you practice scripts and dialogues? It's almost like you wanna be the best in the world at something, but I'm not gonna practice. You'd have to set a goal not to get better if you think scripting and role play practice is something that's not for you. Or you'd have to be so extremely arrogant to think you already say everything correctly, you don't need to practice. No matter how good I am, no matter how long I've been doing this, and I've been doing it a long time, I've learned that there's always a better way to say things. And there's always a better way and a new way to overcome an objection or resolve a concern and ask closing questions. Today I've learned that we don't even do that anymore like we used to. We used to tie people down and back them into a corner by using slick dialogue. Now our dialogue is designed to create better services, to deeper understand what the client is looking for. And in our role plays, using shift modules and other emotional intelligence tools, we're able to dig deeper into the client's wants, needs, and desires so that we clearly understand what they want. And then we practice our script so that we can present the solution in a way that resonates with them and makes them feel comfortable with the response. Script practice is an art. And when done effectively and consistently over time, it will take your game to a whole new stratosphere. So how often do we do role play? When do we practice our scripts? As part of our training on creating a culture of productivity, we recommend a minimum of 30 minutes every day. 30 minutes every day doing the same thing over and over and over again. During your practice, we work on two things. We've created what's called a seller information sheet and a buyer information sheet. When you're doing role plays for getting information about the seller, we want you to follow the specific questions that are designed in the seller information sheet. There's a methodical flow with the way that we ask questions that brings the client to make an appointment. It's a beautiful thing because you're genuinely interested in who the client is and why they're moving and what's important to them. And then you find out all of those things. You get all their contact information so you can follow up and then you can go in and do their home search or you can pull comps based on what it is they've shared with you so that when you present in your listing presentation, you present in a way that they go, wow, he was really listening or she was really listening. The same is true with the buyer information sheet. With the buyer, we want to know what's important to them. Why are they moving? What is their budget? Have they been pre-approved? What location are they looking in? Or are they open to other locations? Oftentimes, especially with rising interest rates and lack of inventory, people have a certain area that they say they want to be in, but when you ask the right questions, you find that they're open to additional areas as well. But if you don't ask questions correctly because you haven't practiced how to ask them, you end up getting stuck in a small area where there's not a possible solution. As real estate agents, our goal is to provide great client experiences, to move people forward in the process by understanding what the real concern is and then providing real solutions to their problems. All of these things happen 
when we run into our script practice. What if for the next 30 days, I asked you to do a simple activity? And here's what I'd like you to do. I would like you to write down every time the client gives you an objection or a threat or a reason why they're not moving forward. Just do that for 30 days. You can do it in a Google sheet or an Excel spreadsheet, it doesn't matter to me, and just write down every objection. And then I want you to, in advance, write down the exact words that you would say when that comes up. And then I want you to practice it. And when you say it out loud, ask yourself, did that sound right? Was that a good way to get the client to move forward? Or is the client still in the same spot after using that script or dialogue? If what you're saying isn't working, here's a secret, stop saying that. I don't even care what you say, just quit saying that. We created a product called a script for that that has literally hundreds of scripts for every scenario you can come up with in real estate. You can click on the link down in the description if you wanna learn more about a script for that role play game. And it gives you scenarios, it gives you different challenges, there's some games you could play with it when you're role playing with your team and it's just kind of a fun way to do it. But whether you use my scripts or somebody else's scripts or free scripts, it doesn't matter to me. What matters is that you practice. Let me give you an example. Right now there's a few things that we hear constantly. Um, common objections are, I'm a renter and I'm in a month to month lease. I can't buy a house today because when I was looking at houses in my price range, interest rates were only at 3%. Today, they're at 7%. So I can't possibly afford to move forward. So let me give an example of a script for that. We have proprietary language that we use when we're doing role play and script practice that says, oh, I totally understand how you feel. Have you heard about our interest rate offset program? What do you mean by that? Oh, I mean, it's a system that's an exclusive or proprietary system that allows us to go in and calculate the difference between what the payment would have been at 3% and where it is today at 7%. And then we have a series of things that we go through when we represent you to do everything in our power to offset the difference. And I run through a calculator and show them what it would look like. And the difference might be 15 or 20,000 or $30,000. I'm not promising that I can get you a $30,000 discount on the house you buy, but things such as discount points, buy down seller conditions, concessions from the builder or additional upgrades. There's all kinds of things we can do to offset as much of that 20 or $30,000 as possible. If we were able to offset as much of that as possible, would you continue looking for a home? with the idea that that's gonna be our goal in the negotiation. You see, by having a system, giving it proprietary language, by role playing it, and then having a tool or a calculator, I'm able to take a buyer that was stuck and feeling frustrated, and they're sitting on the sidelines, and get them re-engaged and feeling opportunistic or hopeful that they'll be able to get a home. And when they go from frustrated and stuck to hopeful, they'll move forward in the process. That's an example of multiple scripts and dialogues that we have. Would you like that one? I'll tell you what, I'm just gonna give it to you. Just because you're watching this video, go down into the, into the description and I'll give you a free download of the interest rate offset system that'll include the full story. Uh, and I want you to read it out loud as part of your role play. And then it gives you the tool and it gives you the calculator on how to solve it. And then there's actually a script on how to role play and practice it. So get with your team, get with your partner, get with your significant other, get with a friend and role play and practice your scripts and dialogues. They say that practice makes perfect, but you gotta practice the right things. So plug into Workman Success Systems and we'll give you the tools, the systems, and the trade secrets that the top agents and teams are using to role play today. I look forward to working with you as you continue to improve the words that you choose to use when you're with your buyers and sellers. Good luck with your role play and let's make a difference.